Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, week 11 of the course. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is the Tallahassee version of this video. I'm recording this video from Tallahassee. I just attended the um, USF, USF's Day at the Capitol where students from the Tampa campus and the St. Pete campus and the Sarasota campus, which is where I'm from, um, lobbied legislators in Tallahassee about you know, USF priorities. That was a great day. Uh, if you guys ever get an opportunity to participate and you're interested in how you know state government works and government works, which I assume you are if you're taking this class, then uh, I highly recommend that you do it. I actually had the opportunity to to meet one of the one of the students in the class in person for the first time, Barry. Uh, so Barry, it was cool meeting you. Um, hope you enjoyed the day. Uh, so so yeah. Anyway, I would take advantage of that. Um, it's going to be a short video tonight because it's 1030 and uh, my internet connection is not great here so I'm afraid if the video is too long I won't be able to upload it but there are a few points I want to cover. Um, first I want to make a few announcements. Uh, quiz 3 was last week. I noticed several people didn't actually get a chance to take the quiz. Um, if you're still interested in taking the quiz, email me. I'll let you take it. I'm going to deduct points for lateness but it'll be better than zero. So. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Final paper's coming up. This is week 11. Final paper's due in week 15, so uh, that's essentially a month. So it seems like you got a, lot, a long time, but you actually don't. So um, I'm happy to you know work out ideas with you guys on that. If you want to talk about you know topics you want to write about, or you know what were the views of particular thinkers regarding the particular topics I suggested, um, <clears throat> and then I'm willing to read drafts too. So so get those to me by the, the date that I have listed on the, the paper guideline. Okay, so uh, this week Rousseau, right? And Rousseau is kind of the bridge in this course between um, sort of state of nature theories and liberalism, which is what we're actually reading this week, we're reading uh, Mills on Liberty. So I just wanted to make a few few brief comments about, about Rousseau. Um, and how he relates to the other sort of state of nature of thinkers and how he's going to lead into where we're going. So, of course, Rousseau opens um, on the social contract with his famous statement, man is born free, but everywhere he's in chains. All right. So right away we can see that Rousseau's primary concern is freedom or liberty. You know, if you had to sum up, you know, what Rousseau is concerned with in one, one word, that would be it, would be maintaining liberty, right? Which is quite different in a way than than what uh, Hobbes and you know Locke to some extent, but definitely Hobbes was concerned about, which was essentially security, right? So we have these two competing ideas of of liberty and security, and Rousseau recognized. So his you know Rousseau and Hobbes had some similar stories in a lot of ways, right? I mean they both thought that we were in a state of nature and we had to escape from a state of nature to arrive at a government you know, that could essentially allow us to, to function as, as a society. But how, their accounts of the state of nature and how we actually get there are radically different, right? And what it even looks like once we, once we get into a civilized society, right? So for Hobbes, it's, you know, the war of man against man. Everybody's entitled to everything. And this leads to, you know, this leads to the state of war, which if we can't escape from, we would live short and nasty, <clears throat> nasty lives, right? Rousseau has a different perspective, right? Rousseau actually thinks, so Hobbes thinks that man is driven by fear and pride. Uh, Rousseau actually thinks that man is naturally good. And he even says once in uh, on the social contract that uh, human beings are not naturally enemies with one another, naturally in, in italics, in, in the text, right? So... He actually wrote this book called uh, Discourse on the Origins of Inequality, where he actually traces, sort of like, does a historical tracing of man moving from sort of the, the state of nature into sort of modern civilized society, right? And he, he makes this argument that man starts off in a solitary way where they sort of take care, you know, you don't need other people to meet your basic needs, meaning getting food, getting water shelter, things like that, but eventually man runs into a woman or something like that, and they procreate, and then they, they gather together in societies, and um, 
you know, it's it's that point for for Rousseau. The the key point is when people form a small village, because that's the point when people start to become self aware, and they also start to become selfish because they realize that there's competition amongst, especially amongst the men in the tribe for, you know, for sex and mating and things like that. So he thought that that was the point where, you know, human beings actually become corrupted, right? And it gets even worse once, you know, uh, materialism actually gets added, added into the mix, right? So, so different accounts, um, but they both arrive at this idea that there needs to be some sort of, um, some sort of agreement, right? To, to, um, in Hobbes's case, to give the power, right? To, to this one sovereign who sort of rules the society and has the complete authority to do whatever they think is necessary. Rousseau's account's very different, right? Because Rousseau says that rather than ceding all of your authority to one sovereign, the people themselves are actually the sovereign, Right? And that's why Rousseau talks about force and slavery is because he's actually referring to the type of a government that exists under Hobbes as sort of sovereign body, where essentially the people are slaves to the sovereign and the sovereign uses force to get what they want. And Rousseau's alternative to, alternative to that is this idea of agreement, mutual agreement, which is the social contract. Right, And, and the social contract is supposed to represent the common will or the general will of the people, right? So that's what gives it legitimacy is that it is in fact the will of the people. So real quickly going back to, to Rousseau's, his concern is that, you know, man is great in the beginning. He has this natural freedom, but then he, you know, runs into other people and gets corrupted. Rousseau wants to know how can we maintain this freedom that he's talking about in that first, first sentence when he said, man is born free, but everywhere's in chains. Essentially, he wants to know how you can get man back to freedom or liberty while still enjoying the benefits of being in a society. And his argument is through the social contract, right? Because he says that there are, there are two, two kinds of liberty. One is a natural liberty, which man has in the state of nature. And they can do whatever they want, essentially. And the other is civil liberty, right? And he has this interesting phrase when he's talking about civil liberty because he says in a society, people are actually forced to be free. Right? And what does he mean? Well, it, it of course begs the question of what he means by free, right? And what he actually means is that we are not slaves to our desires, to our natural impulses, right? And the way that we actually get there is by developing a kind of moral freedom or moral liberty. And by living in society and submitting our individual will to sort of the collective will, which is supposed to represent, you know, our will to a degree, um, we actually develop this moral liberty, right? So by civil liberty meaning, or civil freedom, meaning that you're following the dictates of the general will, which is supposed to represent your will. So you're exercising your civil freedom by going along with and participating in sort of the social contract. But he thinks this is actually going to lead us to something that we can't attain in the state of nature, which is moral liberty, which is actually freedom from our, our passions, which he, which he thinks drives us. So that's essentially how you can gain freedom, you know, in a society that's based upon the sort of mutual agreement that, that's found in, in the social contract. So Rousseau argues that, sure, you lose the natural liberty, but you gain this new kind of liberty. And you also have, you know, have the benefits of society, you know, protection, you know, and, you know, property rights and all these other things that he talks about. Um, so really, you know, really interesting account. And But the key thing to remember is that his account is very different than Hobbes, even though it looks like Hobbes on... You know, on the surface, they share a lot of similarities. The also, also the the other second thing to remember is Rousseau's you know primary concern is liberty, and sort of this launches us into sort of this modern era of liberalism that we're going to talk about with uh, we talked about with Locke. We're going to talk about with Mill, and then we're going to talk about you know in the Federalist Papers and sort of the American government and American political theory. Uh, so okay, so I think we're going to we're going to call it there. Uh, for tonight because I'm I'm a bit tired so uh, 
But if you guys have any more questions about Russo, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. I know his, his stuff can be a bit confusing at times, but but I think that's essentially the gist of it. So, so yeah, this week we're talking about Mill. Uh, I'll post the discussion question tomorrow, and 